Good Saturday evening, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with a quick check of the forecast into the rest of the weekend. We've got, again, some pretty soggy conditions across the Mid-South as what's left of a hurricane makes its way up our direction. We're not looking at any hurricane force winds, no damage, anything like that, but these remnant storms can cause a decent amount of some pretty heavy amounts of rainfall across the area, and that's what we're going to be winding up with throughout the course of the next couple of days. So get set for some sloppy travel out there and also the potential of maybe some lightning across the Mid-South. Doesn't look like severe weather, so that's good news, but we'll keep you updated on that. If you're just tuning in, if you've never been here before, welcome to our weather blog. Again, great opportunity for you to ask questions about what's going on with weather in the Mid-South. Drop your location, city, state, and whatever weather information you've got into the comments section below. We'll read those off as we go along throughout the rest of the evening. And if you can't stick around for the whole thing, that's great. We got more weather information again in the red bar down here, scrolling along quite nicely. Or you can go to this website address, wreg.com slash weather for more information on that. And of course, if you've got weather pictures out there, we'd love to see them of wherever you are in the Mid-South or beyond. We're not picky. We'll just go ahead and send in what you got. Sunrise, sunset. Didn't see a lot of that today, but it would be nice to see some if anybody got any of those pictures out there. Plus, coming up in just a little bit, one Mid-Southerner is in Panama City, Florida, and is sending back pictures from the area as part of the recovery efforts. We'll show you what that looks like coming up here in just a little while as well. So if you got any questions, anything else, please email me at austin.onic at wreg.com. Welcome to everybody who's joining us for the evening tonight. Currently in the Mid-South area, a little bit ahead of myself here, not seeing any precipitation up until the cutoff time earlier this evening, so we didn't get any rainfall specifically for Saturday, but again, a lot going to be picked up in the next 24 hours. High temperature today is 73. Normal for today is 75, so we're still pretty far below normal over the course of the last couple of days, thanks to that last cold front that came on through there. Rain and 56 in Independence, Mississippi. Stephen Crabb, thank you very much uh, for that one. Ash Flat, Arkansas, don't think I've ever been there before. Debbie Moore, raining with 50 degrees, feels like 47, a little bit of a wind chill there. Sabrina Smith from Olive Branch, Mississippi, drizzly and cool, thank you very much for that. Scott Jarvis, 66, and light rain in Houston, Mississippi. Losing daylight steadily as we head toward the winter season. We're down to 11 hours, 23 minutes today. We'll lose another two minutes of daylight into tomorrow with sunrise. Not that we're going to be able to see it or anything at about 7.05 tomorrow. And sunset on Sunday will be at about 6.26 or so. Memfix 4 construction continues at I-240 and Poplar. Again, all lanes shut down at this time. Traffic here is westbound Poplar being routed onto the interstate heading back toward Walnut Grove. But everything in this area, north, south, east and west has been shut down once again. Now, as TDOT describes this, this is a weather-dependent project, so not any idea just yet or anything in the way of any slowdowns or calling off the construction for the weekend. Looks like just rainfall at this time, so not a major problem, but as you can see, some pretty wet streets out there as well. So anything going through this area, Park Avenue, Quince Avenue, that's your overpasses that are detours to the south, Shady Grove and Walnut Grove back to the north of this. So again, something to keep an eye on there. I think we may have the camera here, possibly. Now, let me see if we have that lined up. That's, that's what it looks like on Poplar. You can see the traffic heading back to the north. That's back toward Walnut Grove here and southbound toward Poplar Avenue is still shut down at this point in time and will be throughout the course of the rest of the weekend. Now, going into around the area of downtown Memphis on our Cotton Exchange camera, a lot of rainfall out there so far. We are seeing some pretty chilly conditions, a wet, drizzly evening pretty much out there. Jessica Witt Bateman, cold and wet in Walnut, Mississippi. Thank you very much uh, for that one. Todd Tidswell, it's raining the end. Okay. Kurt, short to the point. Thank you very much. But if you don't mind, I'll continue for a little bit. Thank you very much for summing it up nicely. Jennifer Sylvie, 59 degrees, light drizzle in South Haven. Thank you very much uh, for that one. Paulette Morrow, 52 and light rain in New Bern, Tennessee. Thank you very much there. 
scattered showers across the metro area, the 240 loop right in there, the rest of Shelby County surrounding that, and again, kind of a light drizzle situation here, but we've got more heavy areas of rainfall, especially down from a line around Corinth, Mississippi to Tupelo, and down into east central Mississippi. Not severe weather, just a more intense line of showers taking place. And then back into eastern Arkansas, even more rainfall on Storm Tracker 3S radar. So we're going to see this continue to move on through the area. So again, not totally socked in by rain, but it is going to be, again, possibilities of showers all the way throughout the rest of the evening. So if you're heading out the door pretty soon, you're going to need that rain protection and some patience on the roadways. Because again, remember with weather like this out there, wet roadways, less friction, more stopping distance necessary, and paying attention to what's going on down the roadway. Now back to the southwest, not this right here over us, but this down here was a hurricane a few days ago. Now over the desert southwest, west of El Paso, into the Four Corners, desert southwest area moving up this direction. This eventually will tap into Gulf of Mexico moisture and drag some Pacific moisture with it. So as what's left of Sergio makes its way into the Mid-South, we'll continue again to see the potential of more chances of showers and thunderstorms out there with all that rainfall, thanks to what was once a tropical storm and or hurricane, depending on what time it was out there. Temperatures on weather at three live real-time weather showing temperatures back in the mid to upper 50s at this time with fractions of an inch of rain across much of the area for right now. Jerry Walker Cullen, good evening. Fayette Corners raining in that area. Pouring down in Verona, Mississippi, Josh McGregory. Thank you very much for that one. Jeffrey Fryden, need to go buy milk and bread. If you're going to the uh, grocery store, I could use some root beer. I'm running very low at this point in time, so thank you very much for that one. Jimmy Haley, raining in Los Angeles. Thank you very much for a report from the West Coast. Don't get a lot of California viewers on here for right now. Thank you very much uh, for checking in. And fairly rare occurrence, except for this, I believe that's the uh, monsoon season and starting up for Los Angeles, if I'm not mistaken, out there for the wintertime. All right, running the numbers into the rest of the evening. Temperatures should actually be relatively stable, but over the next several hours, winds are have been out of the north-northeast today. They're going to be turning to come out of the southeast later on, and that's going to have an effect on our weather by tomorrow morning early tomorrow morning, the temperatures will start to head back upwards again. We'll be looking for temperatures back in the mid to upper 60s to lower 70s and also seeing some pretty mild conditions into the rest of Sunday, which may trigger off a few more showers and thunderstorms out there across portions of the area. So that could be something to watch out for. And outdoor activities tomorrow, you're really going to have to pick and choose your times because there are going to be more of these showers and thunderstorms continuing out there right on in through News Channel 3 at 10 and quite possibly into around Monday morning. Speaking of which, let's run this ahead a little bit farther into the extended forecast. And again, going through about early Monday, morning. New surge of moisture heading on through right about the time the kids are heading for the school bus stop. So everybody in the Mid-South looks like we may be picking up some more showers and thunderstorms that could soak things down by just a little bit out across much of the area. So we're seeing again also the possibility of maybe some fog in the Mid-South tomorrow with all that colder air mixed in with a little bit of that warmer air coming up from the Gulf and all the moisture out there. So into tomorrow morning, we could be looking at the potential for some patchy fog across the area. Not great chances, but again, something to watch out for if you're traveling any place into tomorrow. Madison Miller, cold and rainy in Wynn, Arkansas. Thank you very much. Keith Tabor, hope I'm saying that right. Light rain in Hurricane Mills. Thank you very much for that. Walterine Miller Morgan, not quite Sergio just yet, but the leading portion of the moisture ahead of what's left of that storm, but it is heading our general direction at this point in time. Ken Williford, thank you very much for the very kind words. Do appreciate that one, and thanks to everybody else for stopping on by uh, for areas around the Mid-South area for tonight. Here's the forecast. Again, running the numbers for the seven-day forecast, going to be going back to about a 90% coverage chance into tomorrow. Showers and thunderstorms early, then just showers mainly for the rest of the day. Then as that storm system of, that was Sergio rotates on through the area, warm air ahead of that system, but that means colder, drier air coming back behind it. And that means temperatures will be about this warm Right now, as we go into Monday, even cooler conditions expected on Tuesday as the rain 
kind of sticks around more piecemeal than anything else, and it should be gone as we go into very early Wednesday, but some much cooler weather out there. Definitely something to plan ahead for for dinner if you want something uh, warm in the crock pot, getting some stews or something going on, because we're looking at some pretty chilly and rainy temperatures out there. I'm thinking about a nice clam chowder myself, but that's just me. Another chance of showers by next Friday night could be a problem for Friday night football, and again for outdoor athletic activities on Saturday. Some pretty poor weather for the Tigers playing at the Liberty Bowl for today. And then after that, we dry out and warm back up again. Should be close to normal as we start the last week of October. So we're seeing, again, some pretty quiet conditions out there for the most part. Not expecting severe weather here, so definitely some good news on that one. So good news on that for the time being, at least at this point. Molly Zaladek, your phone saying it's going to thunderstorm starting tonight and tomorrow morning. Glad to hear your phone agrees with me. I'm glad to hear about that. Austin, uh, John Wesley Mulliken. Oh, is that the John Mulliken from the Pink Palace? Thank you very much if that is you. If not, thank you very much for the kind words uh, regardless. Diane Simmons Flax, cold and raining in Batesville, Mississippi. Thanks for joining us. Uh, speaking of Michael, good news at this point. It's now just basically an area of low pressure. It's going to be continuing to work its way across the Atlantic. In fact, it's on the way and eventually will be making its way all the way back over into around portions of Spain and France by this Monday. And this is not good news for the Iberian Peninsula because that's not the only system that's out there. We actually have another system that's been wandering around the Atlantic. Leslie has been a named storm for nearly 23 days. Absolutely incredible to see that. This storm is heading for Portugal and is basically there as of right now, just shy of hurricane strength hitting Portugal and northeastern Spain in the next couple of days. That could also make its way into around France and the rest of Europe out there. Now, for Sergio, it is on its way our direction. It is now, again, kind of wandering across the northwestern part of Mexico. We're not seeing a lot of major consideration for problems here. And the computer models are taking this, the remnants of it, in this general direction. But the main thing to think about with this rotation as it goes on through, once it taps into that Gulf of Mexico moisture, brings some moisture from the Pacific, we're looking at heavy chances of rainfall and, again, the possibility of thunderstorms. So thanks to the Pacific, that's our next weather maker coming through here in the course of the next couple of days. Have to think, I'm going to go for a three-peat here for tonight. Arkansas SEC 73, federal officer, I don't know exactly which branch of the services he's serving with as a federal officer uh, on there, but I have to thank him for sending these pictures. This is what it looked like before, I believe, Tennessee Task Force 1 got going in the last couple of days, ready to go to Panama City, Florida. This was, I guess, the staging area in and around Memphis. 140 characters on Twitter, kind of hard to get all the details on that, but hopefully hearing more back from him a little bit later on. The trees that he also sent pictures here going toward Panama City, this was on the the other side of the storm where the winds were going out toward the Gulf of Mexico. So the trees are all leaning away from the land and out toward the water. So this is where the hurricane could cause damage in all directions as that system moves on through. Some of the more powerful winds, kind of hard to see because this was a vertical taken picture here, but the trained cars on the tracks have been pushed off the tracks one way or another. But also with some of these train cars, it's being reported that some of the actual structures of the cars themselves have been separated from the wheelbase. You can see the wheels sitting out there and no cars on top of the wheelbase whatsoever. They're just gone because of all those winds that were out there, nearly 140 miles per hour as that storm came on shore. So just a few pictures of what it looks like down around Panama City. Thank you to Arkansas SEC 73. Please stay safe down that direction and we'll get any more of those featured. We'll let you know a little bit more uh, in that area. Artem Pavlenko, welcome from Media Outlet, wherever that happens to be. Thank you very much for that one. Lisa Hinton, yes, uh, there was a hurricane, Sergio, but no longer. It's just a area of thunderstorms and just some rainfall coming our way, spinning low pressure in the atmosphere. So that's about it. But not going to be seeing, and I have to reemphasize this, not going to be seeing hurricane force winds or anything like that here in the Mid-South area. If you've got weather pictures, 
pictures, send them along to me. Again, we'll feature them on air or online. Aonic underscore WREG3 on Twitter. Austinonic WREG, one whole word mashed together there. I didn't pick it, so don't blame me. And again, on Instagram at Aonic, no underscore necessary, WREG3 as well. If you'd like to know more about Skywarn as we get into the second severe weather season peak of the year, it's starting basically right now, October through December. We can get some very nasty storms through here, and knowing what to do beforehand is a very good plan, especially if you've moved here, you've never gone through severe weather, now's the time to get ready. National Weather Service in Memphis teaching Skywarn spotter training classes. The next meeting is going to be held in Coffeyville, Mississippi. And again, that'll be this Monday, 6.30 p.m., at the multi-purpose building 18025 Highway 7 in Coffeyville. There's another one coming up on Tuesday that'll be held in Nesbitt, Mississippi, very close to the Memphis metro area. There will be no class taught in the Memphis metro area, but if you want to attend that one being close by, that'll be your best opportunity. These meetings are free open to the public. Whoever wants to stop by and learn more about what to do before, during, and after severe weather, this is the place you want to be. It's taught by the meteorologist at the National Weather Service and a great way to learn what to do before severe weather hits and how to protect yourself during severe weather. So I highly recommend taking this course out there. If you have any questions, you want to learn more about the other ones out there, let me know. Again, austin.onic at wreg.com or you can visit the National Weather Service in Memphis at weather.g gov slash meg that's their three letter designator weather.gov slash meg or just go to weather.gov click on the mid south area and it'll take you directly to that page simple as that easy to get the information out there my forecast available throughout the rest of the weekend on country 92.5 and oldies 102.3 on the east arkansas broadcast network stations one more look at the forecast before we wrap this up for tonight 70s for tomorrow Cooler by Monday, much cooler for Tuesday, and the showers will be sticking around. Isolated thunderstorms Sunday and Monday, more showers and dwindling chances at that as we go into the early morning hours of Tuesday. And it looks like we'll be wrapping up the rainfall as we get into around the area of Wednesday, drying out for Thursday, so looking pretty good around the area there. I'll have an update on weather where the troops are coming up here in about a half an hour on my Facebook page. Again, you can find me on all these social media networks, so stay tuned for that. So if you have friends or loved ones serving in the United States military, we'll talk more about what the weather's like at certain outposts around the world, so please join me for that. Also, we'll talk more about more Skywarn meetings as well, and that'll be coming up tonight at about 8.45 p.m., so stay tuned again uh, for more on that. Birdia Pope Cooper, a little light rain in uh, Batesville, may need a light jacket. That's a very good idea. Raining in Faulkner, Mississippi. Lois Watson, thank you very much for stopping on by on that one. Stay tuned for more. Kristen Holloway will have all the day's news. I'll have all the day's weather. And Megan Rice has a very busy day in sports. And that's all coming up tonight on News Channel 3 at 10. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, I'm meteorologist Austin Onyx. Stay tuned for much more with News Channel 3 on air and online throughout the rest of the weekend. And thanks for joining us tonight. <laughs>